and optional module for student manager and ACE web. I see you have picked up on my. I got that. Yes. Yes. Seal there. Yes. yes. And we talked yes. about what's old is new again. And we've had this for a while, but it's all new because it's all better and greater. Well, added as with a lot of things at ACEware, <clears throat> we listened to customers and we had some good feedback from a couple of meetings this spring, and so we're ready to uh, show you some of the new stuff. <clears throat> One of the things I want to do right off the bat is to, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, tell you what we're going to do. While you're looking at that, raise your hand if you have, a, if you have the attendance module. <clears throat> I think some of you do not. It is an optional module. It's a $995 add-on. And as we go through it, we'll explain to you what it provides if you don't already have it or already use it. So raise your hand uh, if you have uh, the attendance module. <clears throat> and Lori, I should have had you do a, um, a poll, but um, tell me what we've got. And I don't see attendees if you'd want to make me an organizer so I can see the hands, Lori. I'm doing it now. All right, there we go. So now I can see the attendee list attendees, and we've got some on there. And for those of you that don't have, well, and then we've got those of you that have it, <clears throat> I see a lot of hands. I don't see a lot of hands on there. Uh, and there may be some of you that have it and may not be doing much with it. And that, of course, is what we hope to do here. So uh, we'll talk a bit about, again, what it'll do for you, setup of a particular class, the recording, reports, coming attractions, and questions as um, like I said, we will not take an hour unless there's a ton of questions, and so hopefully we'll get you on your way. It is summertime, and hopefully people are be able to take off a little early on some of these nice summer days. <clears throat> um, what does it do for you? And uh, as most of you know who have run Manager, there is at the registration record level, and I'm going to go ahead and get to that uh, so we can pull up a student in a class. <clears throat> At the registration record level, we've got um, things like the grade. We have things like the number of hours. Um, and again, am, am I screen catching up? Am I am I refresh doing good? It's doing very well today. Okay, all right. Uh, the grade, the hours. Uh, there is the ability to set up a status field. So if you wanted to create a status for a registration. <clears throat> that is for a single record of a student in a class. Now, what the attendance module allows you to do, and again, it's primarily in use. Uh, it's been used by technical programs, more your career-based, uh, so I'd say technical and career programs are the ones that use this, is that it allows you to track daily attendance. And uh, so the idea is the, how long they attended a session. And we're talking per day. So if a class had five sessions, you would have five attendance records, one for each day, <clears throat> where you can note the number of hours. Uh, and if there's an absence, why? Uh, you can record a grade or a score or some kind of note about an individual day's session and be able to add a, a secondary marker on it or def, um, a, a, a code assigned to a day's activity for a student in a class. So how do you do this? Let's, let's, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, let's, let's get you the big picture. Set up, well, first of all, you've got to buy the module. It's a $900, $995, as we said. Um, <clears throat> as with most of our modules, if you want to try it out before you buy, we offer the 90-day test drive. <clears throat> and your tech can get that set up. And you can experiment with it if you're not sure if it's going to give anything or add anything to you. The first thing is always that it starts with a class. And uh, for those of you using it, um, what it's based on is, or if we're not, it's based on room use records. <clears throat> Got it. Got it. Ate something funny for lunch, and it's <clears throat> tickling the throat. Uh, when you set up a class in Student Manager, <clears throat> you know that you have uh, get my pointer going here. 
you have a room use, uh, it creates a record of the day of the class that the class meets, <clears throat> and for each day of the class it creates the start time, end time. Now, room use records are based on, or attendance records are based on room use records. And this is the big deal right here. Make sure that you've settled on the room use or your room schedule, your class schedule, before starting attendance tracking. Because once you have built out records, especially if it is a 30, 40, 50 plus plus session class, if you say, oh, I'm changing my mind, I'm going to make the records Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, rather than Tuesday, Thursday, you have a real mess. <clears throat> so again, as with most all things, uh, the idea is measure twice, cut once. Make sure you've got the class set up the way you want, schedule-wise, day meeting time-wise, day of the week-wise, before you create the attendance records. Have I emphasized that enough, Lori? I hope so. I, I, <laughs> I think we should just pause here and ring some bells or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very Did good. So that? that is a big one. Okay. Then on the course screen, you've got a couple of places you've got to check. <clears throat> One is a box that says, "Yes, I want to attract attend. I want to track attract. I want to track attendance for this class." The next one is then when <clears throat> again the majority of students are registered, and typically, um, you know, they would be registering prior to the class, and you probably would if you were in practice and. <clears throat> we'll talk about uh, a, an opportunity to give feedback in a minute. I would assume in practice you don't start recording attendance until after you've had a week or two weeks or you know, you're know you into the class already. And so by then you would presumably have the bulk of students registered. So don't hit the Create Attendance button until at least after, or I guess I should say, right before you are ready to start recording attendance based on what happened in the class the last week. <clears throat> Once you do that, then, um, now, OK, and this is the, the, the note. You're going to have late people. So if you do have somebody who comes in after you have already created attendance, once you've enrolled a student, go back into the master course, hit the Create Attendance again, and again, it won't overwrite records for existing students. It will just create a room use attendance record <clears throat> for those newbies. Uh, so it, it'll fill in the blanks, if you would, or fill in the records uh, for late enrollees. So you can do that as many times as you want uh, if you've got late ads or people that come into the class you know, after you've begun uh, doing attendance tracking. Now, I believe that if, if you have someone come into the class at the, at the two-week period and the class met three times a week, the first six sessions of that class, this student is going to have zero, uh, you know, zero enrollment record. So that is, again, that's up to you and your policy with how you deal with late enrollments with your students. <clears throat> OK. Um, again, as always, uh, we're going to go along a little further, stop for questions, and certainly have time at the end. Uh, again, we'll, we'll probably be done for main questions in a half an hour. So we're now we're ready to record attendance. And the one thing I did want to note is that there actually are two levels of places where you can record attendance. At the class level, where you can see an entire class roster at a time, and at the registration level. So you can go into a single individual student's record and be able to look at all of their uh, uh, the class history records for their that student in one particular class. Most of you, I'm assuming, are doing register. You know, you'll be tracking it at the class level. <clears throat> um, Lori, we good so far? So good. We're very good. All right. So um, now, now that we're ready to record attendance, we've maybe had class going a week or ten days, and you're ready to put in the attendance. You go to the class record, hit record attendance, and that brings us up our grid of the students in the class. And the way it's organized is it's, it's organized by student. I believe it is alphabetical by last name. It shows chronologically all of the class meeting sessions. 
based on, again, the room use schedule of the class. <clears throat> You've then got an hours column, uh, which is the hours the class meets, the, a code to assign a module, which is that kind of special use field. You can use it for a variety of purposes. And then if you have a grade or a score or a pass-fail or any kind of quantitative, qualitative piece, uh, you can put it in there. Now, uh, this grade is a character field, which means you can type in a letter grade, A, B, C, or D, or put in a number, you know, 98, 95, 100 uh, in that note. In uh, doing attendance at the class level, a couple of permutations or options, you can have a, you can choose to show all dates for the students or only show records for a given date. <clears throat> and so if you put in a if you put in a particular date, it would only show records for that one date. Uh, so it'll show each student, Blagojevich, Miller, Obama, uh, just for the 23rd of July. Um, there's an option to fill in default. And again, I would hope that most of your students go to class, they attend the entire class. So with a large class, and you're working on a particular day's attendance, uh, you can choose to, say, fill in the default hours and then just edit those people who were absent. Um, again, recording the hours. If you had partial attendees, <clears throat> if you wanted to do the grade, if you wanted to put in a reason for why they were absent, uh, you can do that. And then when you're done, OK, close. We'll close the window. <clears throat> um, and then save, uh, or if you're working, and again, this is a behavior issue, if you click cancel after you've been working on these records, it will not save anything you have done. Um, if you are working with a large class and it's going to take you a little bit of time, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to hit that save button um, you know, after every few minutes of work, because obviously you don't want the system to crash, the network to drop, to have a power outage if you're halfway through a 100-person class putting in a week's worth of data. <clears throat> um, okay, that is basically the class-level attendance. Um, I'm going to stop, Lori, and see if there are any hot-button topics right now that people want to talk about, and then I'm going to go to a class record in the demo, and we'll go through one. Well, regarding your comment at the very beginning about the, do people have the attendance module, they weren't sure how to check and find out how to do that. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's let, I will give you a quick idea. <clears throat> uh, let me get out of this. Get out, get out. On your student manager, uh, to check if you have particular modules, go to the File menu. I'm up here clear at the top now. Click on Help, and then there's a link called About Student Manager. All right, you with me, Lori? Yes, we're very good. And now on this screen, if you haven't been this before, this shows you the, t the records in each one of the main files. But right here is a link, Show Optional Modules. And this is where you can go in and see, do you have a check mark in attendance tracking? Uh, that is going to tell you whether or not you have the attendance tracking module on your system. Because you're right, it's kind of, it, there is not any huge uh, bells and whistles that pop up. It's, it's kind of blended into the system. All right? Very good. Thank you. Any other questions as we're getting ready to jump to, while well, I'm in the demo, going to go to a live example? Nope, go right on ahead. All right. Well, let's go up to a class that we want to set up for attendance tracking. So I've got a class, 13U Yoga, Beginning Yoga. Uh, it's a class this last summer. Um, I have a check mark on it to say track attendance. You'll note there are 18 room use records. You see the room use records, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, yada, 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 has certain times. So when I'm ready to say, I'm ready to start doing attendance, or maybe I just had a final roster from an instructor, and I'm ready to put that in, you click the attendance, the create attendance button, and it says, total of 72 attendance records were created. 
Now, let's pause a second. So if right, well, let's, okay, we'll go on. So now I'm ready to record attendance. Um, so now it shows us every student uh, and all the sessions. Well, with 18 sessions, I see George Bush, George Bush, George Bush, and I go, go down, and now I'm at session 18. I see Ronald Davis, Ronald Davis. So probably what I want to do it is do it date by date. So I'm going to pick the first date in it, the 13th. So now I'm showing everybody in the class the particular day I'm doing attendance for, and now the hours. Well, uh, most everybody comes, so I'm going to do fill defaults, and I don't have an hours per session. Well, let's put in three hours. Oh, I think this is a two-hour class. Two-hour class. Attendance record saved. So now I can go through, well, who attended and who didn't? Well, uh, Bob Dole had a retirement party, so he missed the first day. We'll give him a zero, and um, we're going to say he didn't show. Now, this is the spot where you can define, and you'll note it's got the plus, which means you can define the codes. What would be reasons or um, absence or late uh, partial attendance codes that you might want to assign to a student to just help you kind of manage and get some history of what's going on with that particular student? Now, uh, module. The module element is one that is really kind of a user-defined. If you needed to store supplemental data about the class, like maybe on a given day, you need to record which day you actually covered the uh, blood-borne pathogen topic in a nursing or a, a Red Cross or a infectious disease class, you could actually create some detail in here and put in either a class topic or something related to the participation in that class. And then finally, this is the grade. So we could put you know, F on this, and uh, Fred got an A, or this was a 75%, or this was a good. I mean, uh, I guess you have three digits on that. So good isn't going to work. A, F, 75, or N, I suppose, N. N A might be the F for Catherine, and we're going to put <clears throat> N slash A for for Bob Dole. Um, questions about the recording of attendance then for a given class, and then to re to continue, then we'd say I want to pick the next day, and you'll note the days that appear in the drop down are the days based on the room use records that you are holding the class. So here we have <clears throat> the the fifth, and I'm going to say fill in the defaults. Normally this populates with the number of hours. I'm not sure what I've got going on hours. Oh, duh! I didn't put in the total hours for the class. That would have that would have helped. Let me actually save this and go back. <clears throat> okay, put in the hours was 36. 36. Save. Yes. Okay, now we'll go back to record attendance. We'll put in our date for the fifth and fill in the defaults. And now it does the math and it'll it'll give us the defaults for that particular class. Bob Dole was here today, but he was late. Uh, uh, whoops, arrived late in class. <clears throat> Maybe somebody else didn't show, but they were missed class because of illness. Save. All right, that is the editing process at the class level. Um, questions, comments, Lori? Any buzz going on? No, I think we're fine for now. All right, let's go back and look now at the registration side. So the alternate way, and this is for one person in one class, <clears throat> is to click uh, the record attendance at the registration screen. Um, and again, we'll go ahead and get to that now with uh, my buddy Bob Dole. D O L E Dole Bob, beginning yoga. So there is the record attendance. And so this gives me now Bob's records for <clears throat> the entire term. So if I do fill in the defaults, <clears throat> now let's go back to that. Uh, 
and now if you know what happened there, when you do fill in defaults, it will overwrite any values that you might have previously put in. So uh, that is something to note. It will completely replace or wipe out all of the um, all of the data that you've put in uh, if you had done some partial editing. So again, that's something to be aware of. Um, I'm making a note to myself if uh, data exists. Yes, yes, I, I, hang on a second. Uh, zero, no show. <clears throat> and now the codes will remain the same, but like on the, the fill-in defaults, it will wipe out any special editing that you've done on this <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> prior to doing the fill-in defaults. And we're going to say 1.5, and we're going to say 2. Now, um, first class graduated, uh, and the dates, we're going to say NA, F, uh, C, and this was an A. All right. Um, add custom date. Uh, one of the options is that if a student says, well, hey, I, you know, Bob is a conscientious student. <clears throat> he says, I'd like, can I make a makeup date in there and, and add more hours? You've got the ability at the individual record to say, add a custom date for this student. And I want to put one for 0604. And let's say I, after the fact, gave him a, or he came in the very next day and wanted to make this up. <clears throat> and now we go back and look at this, and we'll need to save it and come back. Come back, record attendance. Oh, it put it clear at the bottom of the list. Um, so that it will, hmm, OK. This allows you to add a special date to this particular report. I think the way that works, Lori, is because this is based on the room use dates. Supplemental dates are kind of at the bottom of the list. <clears throat> so now I can say, OK, Bob came in. He did homework after school. And we might even say this was a makeup. So we might want to make up a code here. Uh, <clears throat> makeup uh, attendance. So if there, people are wondering why is, uh, why is there a, a date outside of the sequence, uh, you can do that. And he gets an A for that. So, <clears throat> All right, that is the individual registration attendance. Any uh, <clears throat> questions about that? No. We'll keep so far, going. so good? Although you're up to custom records, and I have sent a couple people notes that say pay attention when Chuck is talking about custom records. And is that this what is I just portion. <laughs> I, I just covered that, right, with the idea of, <clears throat> yeah, unique hours for makeup hours. And so I've, I've kind of given a, a, a let the cat out of the bag. <clears throat> but again, uh, you can do that at the course level. And let's go back and show that real quick. So if we're in a given class, and and I suppose in, for those of us in the northern climates, 13, to get my class, 13 UART. <clears throat> in, that's not the one. I think this is the one. OK. Uh, if we are in a, a climate where um, the, there's a snow date. And you said, OK, we couldn't hold class. Uh, here you go, a snow date in July. That's, that's kind of Kansas weather. But if we had to cancel a class session and we had to add another one, and we'll say, we're going to make up a class on uh, Saturday or on uh, Saturday the 13th, uh, we can say, add a custom date. Uh, and again, you can either do it for one student or all students. Um, I'm the only registrant in this one class, but it would show the entire class list. So uh, select all, and now we're going to put in the date. And we said we were going to do it as the 13th of the 13th of save it. <clears throat> so now we've got a record on the 13th uh, for this class that's not in the room use, but it's a custom date that we can <clears throat> used to record makeups or supplemental data or a field trip or a independent study if you're recording. Uh, and again, that might be uh, from the standpoint of the module here. 
Uh, we might call that clinical work. Clinical work, just get out of that clinical work. So we're going to say this was a clinical that um, Chuck did, and you could put in, it could have been more than eight hours. It could have been, uh, um, you know, <clears throat> and pass on that one. Um, questions on the idea of the custom date elements? Basically, being able to add additional data to record of a student's hours, et cetera, in a class that is not related to <clears throat> the standard room use schedule of, of when a class is running. Uh, I do have one question. I was watching questions come in, and that's why I did say to you. Are custom dates accounted for in the attendance report? No, no, Be because you, <clears throat> you could add that. I mean, you could go in and add another date. You say add another session, uh, make this nine sessions, go in and add another session to the room use, uh, but no, it's not. Um, it's it, it doesn't automatically go back. You note the 13th is not in the room use. <clears throat> you would have to manually add it to the room use. Now, you don't have to put that in the room use for these supplemental things. Um, one of the issues about the clinical is probably, and, and you guys tell me since you do this that I'd assume. For each student, it might be a different day. Maybe Sammy uh, is available on Saturdays to do his clinicals. Maybe Susie and Mary can do theirs on a Monday or on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday. So it's not necessarily for you know everybody in the class. Um, but I guess we were saying this was a makeup date, uh, and uh, and so again, you'd perhaps put you know as as a makeup date. Uh, a makeup date in that one rather than this being the idea of a clinical. I was mixing examples in there, but hopefully giving you an idea of some different ways you can use that to record. Did I help or hinder in the explanation there? I think you helped. All right, anything else that you want to cover with this second? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, all right. So. Uh, the custom date, <clears throat> and again, this is um, I, I went through this in the example, and uh, put in the date, and there is the new uh, the data in there. Now this one is showing that it's sorting properly in here, but now maybe that was just because it was assumed that you'd put it at the last class session date. Uh, reporting. Okay, uh, this is one, if you had the early copy of attendance tracking, this is new. And this was released, I'm thinking about version uh, 8 or 9. I'd have to go in and check the records. But the F11 key is a magical key when you have attendance tracking that allows you to do student level tracking of their attendance. And what that is now, so we've got Charles Havlicek with a bunch of data in here. Uh, the F11 key can be brought up anywhere in the program, but it doesn't have a name or a course to tie to at this point. So you'd have to tie in the student ID name and the course number. However, if you are in a student's record, if you are in a student's record and you press F11, uh, get F11 to be here, F11, it'll put in the ID of the student whose record you're in, and it is a similar function key to what you can do with F2, F5, F9, um, and again, when I'm throwing out the F words, if you would, remember that F1, the F1 key will give you a set of keyboard shortcuts. And so here we see F2, F5, and right there is our F11 attendance tracker. Now, the other thing I want to show you, and this is, I'm excited about this, and thanks to, thanks to Greg for this. Oh, cancel. Let me get this. Uh, attendance shortcut bar. We now have, Greg has put together a nice uh, 
a printable sh uh, shortcut cheat sheet that you can download and uh, print out, paste that either on your monitor, if you have a, a standard keyboard, paste it to the top of your keyboard, and it gives you uh, a quick chart of the most commonly used or what we think are the, the, the hottest, coolest keyboard shortcuts. There are a lot more, and if you'll note, it says here, for more detail, we have actually a full PDF document that's, I think, four pages worth of shortcuts that basically help you get your job done, in our opinion, faster, quicker, stronger. Okay, back to the F11 at the student record. <clears throat> so. The options that you've got here are <clears throat> if you leave the course number blank, it'll show all classes that the student is involved in. <clears throat> the default attendance report um, is from the beginning of time up to 8-1-2013. And Jason, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll, I've got a cup of coffee. <clears throat> um, so we'll run this and see what happens. So right now, that gives us all of the attendance records from the beginning of time up to today, the hours the class meet, or the hours I attended, the number of class hours the course meets. It gives a calculation, the number of hours I attended compared to the total hours, what the percentage is, and for actual class meeting days, it tells me how many days out of the total meeting days that I was in participation. So that is a great way. OK, let's, let's go back to that. Let's close this, <clears throat> press F11 again, and it didn't like that. Let's see what's going on. Cannot access user table. I may have to. Reset this, Lori. Closing the name record. Okay. It's not being happy with me here. So, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Jason has got me covered. And exit the program. I'm going to get back out of this. I must have had too many things open. Let me get back to the system. Get me to a desktop. Get thee to a desktop. There you go. OK, <clears throat> let's get have a check here. OK, F11. Now, um, if you wanted to, OK, you with me now, Lori? We back, back up? We're good. OK. If we wanted to just look at the month of June, <clears throat> 06, 01 through 06, 30, and you'll note if you just type the month and the, or the day and the month, and you leave, uh, there it is. If left blank, the end date will default to today's date. So now it'll only show us the attendance records for the month of June and what my percentage was in the month of June. <clears throat> so we'll close that, get back to Havlicek, and see if. OK, that is the student level report. When you go into an individual registration now, I am in the um, music and literature class. If you press F11 at the registration record, it actually drills down to only those attendance records for this student in this class. And the date range represents the entire class. So again, this is all of the eight class sessions for this class. <clears throat> and uh, my percentage, 67.75. Or if I wanted to, I'm going to go back, get back into this F11. If I say, well, again, I just wanted to know for the month of June, 0630, what the attendance was, it'll just give me the report for June. And you look at this, and I was 70% for the whole class. My June attendance wasn't the best. I was barely over half the classes. So 40 wax with a ruler on that. OK, now I'm getting bombarded with questions here. 
Okay. If you, if you add a special session to the list, does it come out when you do the F11? I, it should. Now I'm trying to think <clears throat> whether this was the class that we had the makeup on. Let me get back to the name record. Try the F11. Do all. Go over to the right. And the note, it's not showing us the code on that. We don't have the code set on that. Uh, body intelligence, <clears throat> yoga. That was my buddy Bob Dole. Let's go find Bob Dole. Uh, that's a good question. So let's go with Bob Dole. We're going to look at the report. Beginning yoga on the, I was thinking the 12th was the one that we had a makeup on. No, the 4th. Uh, OK, it is. There it is. Uh, because this class was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we inserted the Tuesday as the makeup, and there it is right there. So it will absolutely report. Let's go into the class now and see if it does that. So that's an affirmative on that. I would have thought Matthew would have covered that. Beginning yoga, we do F11. We hit the OK button. And there is our, our, our class. So it absolutely, it won't restrict uh, the view of the attendance records to the class rec to the classroom use records. All righty. That's yep, good. Got That's that. making good, a good, lot good. of people happy. Good, good, good. Anything else uh, non-related to that one? Nope. We're, well, yes, but we're holding those. Till we're we holding those. Okay. Well, I, we're getting close, I believe, to uh, the, the F11 screen. And we talked about that. Additional attendance reports are available uh, from the reporting menu. <clears throat> and uh, I think one of the standard ones on that is kind of a, you can use your query system. It's under courses, courses attendance. Uh, you can do queries. You can make as many reports as you want. Um, you can do uh, by course or pick a given month. If we do a given class now, yoga class, It'll give us a report for the, the student, all of the sessions of the class, uh, their participation, uh, the grade for each one of these lessons. Uh, that's the default report, which is just basically a list of the name and their attendance record. Um, and then there are some additional ones. I know that we've got clients who have, or customers who have built some special attendance reports. I invite you, and I'm going to have another invitation, I invite you to let your tech know if you've got some attendance reports that you like or you think would be helpful to other people. I would love to build a, a, a bigger repertoire or a reservoir of sample attendance reports. So that's on my, my wish list. So, All right, coming attraction. Now, this is something, uh, do we have anybody from Warren County in here? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't see anybody from Warren County. Goodness. One of the things that we've talked about for a long time is instructor attendance tracking. And this is not live yet. It is in test mode. Stein has and Cheryl are putting together a uh, web component for AceWeb that allows your instructors to go in and log attendance in classes. So again, <clears throat> it'll be similar to the gradebook element under AceWeb. And when they click one of those track options, they will get a list of the class. Again, same kind of behavior, all dates, only one date, fill in default hours. And then they could go in and fill in the codes, put in module data, and put in a grade if they want to do the grade. So that is something we will, I think I can promise you, it will be ready by the start of the fall term. Uh, and uh, the next call, uh, we are looking for a group of hardy volunteers to spend 45 minutes to an hour with Stein and Matthew and I. Uh, and again, folks who are using the attendance module in Student Manager and or folks who do track attendance on whatever format, Excel, on a Big Chief tablet, to spend 45 minutes with us and tell us what you've done, how you record attendance in terms of do you do it daily, do you do it weekly, 
what types of formats or what types of models of operating procedure work best. And again, uh, what I'd like to do is have you uh, shoot an email to me, uh, Chuck at Aceware, if you're interested in, in uh, spending 45 minutes with us to talk about this. Uh, or if you've got, maybe it's not you, but you say, oh, well, Susie in our office is the one that does attendance. She would know exactly what, what's useful and what's not. <clears throat> Volunteer, well, ask her first, but ask her if she, send me their name <clears throat> and we'll get, uh, we'll get them uh, together for a short meeting. And we'll try to see if we can't continue to make the, the attendance tracking a more usable functional piece for you. So, um, all right, well, I believe that is the general questions. Uh, Lori, what have we got for general Q&A? <clears throat> People saying that they have classes that meet at unusual times. For example, they'll have a class that meets Tuesday, Thursday evening and every other Saturday or every third Saturday, <coughs> and how you can deal with that. Uh, somebody else has a similar question. Um, most of our classes do not meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They're sporadic dates. How can we use this? Um, so uh, I, I guess showing folks a little bit more about how to use the room use set up the class. And right. Well, that <clears throat> since the core element of attendance tracking is tied to <clears throat> the room use schedule for classes, it all ties into uh, when you're setting up a class. <clears throat> and if you, uh, the, the big thing is you need to tell the student manager course tool, you need to tell it how many class sessions you're going to have. Now, maybe you say, we, we're going to have 20 class sessions, and normally, hopefully you have some, I'm going to add a new course record, and we're going to call this, you know, funky, funky schedule category, and this is funky schedule, and I funky spelling as well. <laughs> funky schedule class, you presumably have some date that you start. You're going to have some date that you're going to actually begin this class. And you're going to say it's going to have a certain number of sessions, 15, uh, 15 sessions. Now, and if it has, normally it meets on Tuesday and Wednesday. You do that. Well, then once you've, <clears throat> once you've created a, a outside set of class sessions on some kind of schedule, and this is the big deal, and everybody ought to know that you can do this, you may click into the room use box and at this point, change anything about that class. You can change the date. You can change the start hours, end hours. <clears throat> Let me go back to that and let's get, get you some hours. Maybe some 9 a.m. through 12 noon. All right, let's save that. OK, now we got room use. OK. So here we have the schedule. It meets 9 to 12. Regular, it normally meets Monday, Wednesday. We say, well, wait a minute. It only goes uh, till the 18th of September. And then we have a Saturday class on uh, what would be 8-12. I'm, I'm struggling because I need That would be the 17th. So we're going to have 0817. <clears throat> and it's going to meet Saturday. And it meets 12 to. 4 p.m. and again, or, or 9 to 4. So you basically can edit these dates, put in the day, the start time, the end time. This is in military, so again, 1600 is 4 p.m. You put in the start day and the end day for these particular classes. Let me do another one on Saturday, the 17th, 24th, 0824. Saturday, 9 to 16, save that. And now, uh, if I were to say, let me get some enrollments. I'll save it, add a registration, save it. Hey, stay with me now. OK, I'm going to track attendance on this, create attendance. That should show <clears throat> the class dates. So here we have. Uh, the what did I say? Saturday the the seventeenth. Yeah. August the seventeenth is a Saturday, and then you can go in and record the attendance for that. Now note, 
if you say fill in defaults, well, I better cancel this. Uh, hours was, uh, what is, 1632. Uh, yes, I closed it. I got to go back to my funky class. Funky, funky, funky class. Record attendance. If I do fill in defaults, it will default that Saturday to two hours because I said, hey, you, you said that the average class meeting time is two hours a session. So you'd need to put into here <clears throat> that this is a, um, that they, they attended six hours out of the total class hours of 70. That is one thing if you're doing non-standard, non-standard, uh, the fill-in defaults is done on, a, on the average of the number of sessions per day by a number of hours in the class. But that is how you can, again, and between that and the custom date um, is how you can add custom elements to that. Other questions? What's out there? Uh, I have a couple of questions that say if they change the date on the course screen. And if you change a date on the course screen, it will not, it will, these dates remain the same. That is why it is bad behavior. It is, you, you lose the connection. Once you build out the schedule, it's like you copied it and put it into a separate grade book. There is no link that automatically updates the attendance records based on what you're messing with on the course screen. So you may do that, but you've got to know, uh, well, let's go into the course dates on this. Let's say if I wanted to go in and I'm going to change the 17th to the 18th, I'm going to make it on a Sunday, close, save it, and I go to attendance, I lie. I lie like a rug. Matthew is Matthew. Is Matthew on the phone? I, don't Crap. Really so. I didn't think he did that. I didn't it, think he did that. I lied to did. you. Well, I, that's a feature that got added because at one point that didn't do that. Now, so that is, it is going in. He must be doing a find and replace on that. Well, there you go, Lori. I, have, I learned something here. Yeah. So the answer is, you, 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 well, of course it does. How's that, Lori? Well, of course it does. Okay. All right. Well, then we do cover you on that. Um, now, I don't know if you added a new class session you know, just out of the blue, whether that would, uh, I don't think that would do. In other words, you change this to 20 sessions rather than 16. I'm pretty sure that will not be reflected. But you shouldn't be doing that. shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, and it will, once you have recorded so much, I do think it still yeah. has issues. Well, I want to, well, while we're asking other questions, I, we've done this several times. I want to make sure everybody knows we're all inviting you to come. Y'all come next I'll spring come. for 2014. <laughs> Big time in the Little Apple. So, all right, Lori, back to questions. I didn't mean, I, I want to make sure before people wander off here. Just one last question. Okay. Um, is, is it all right if we go from 2013 to 2014 or 2014 to 2015? It should roll across calendar years again. Uh, it, it, it basically, if if you can get the dates in here uh, to roll, and I'm pretty sure we've got the ca the the room use behaving pretty well across years. Um, I'm I'm trying to remember if we how good we are at dealing with leap year, but I think we're pretty darn good. I think because we use Windows calendaring with that. Uh, but yeah, shouldn't be a problem shouldn't be a problem to cross a term if, if you've got a class that runs from one year to the next over a winter term kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's it. All right. Well, again, back to the, uh, uh, back to the, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the end of the conference. We are, I think, off for the month of August, right, Laura? I don't think we're planning to do anything, and we'll plan to reconnect with you all uh, after the 1st of September. We're, we're finishing up the Report Wizard webinar, oh, and then we are going right. to take a short break take for vacation. Break. Yeah. Very Every good. summer we say we're not going to do anything over the summer. And, we'll, June, July, and we, we may find something that we want to do, but anyway, um, I will um, do that. And again, I would back, to the, uh, back to the idea of the shortcuts, I wanted to, oh, get me out of here. Come on, come on, come on. Um, we, uh, Cheryl is going to put a link to that. Um, 
um, that uh, shortcut toolbar somewhere in the reports guides, and she's she's been uh, uh, keeping track of some other things. But we'll have that downloadable shortcut key, uh, <clears throat> which is the shortcuts, and it'll show your F11 um, on the uh, on the website. So, Lori, again, thank you for your your kind and gentle guidance and help with this. And uh, everybody, have a great summer. Let us know. If you, if you don't have attendance and you think you'd like to try it, shoot us an email. <clears throat> uh, if you uh, have attendance or if you do attendance tracking, whether you use our module or not, and are willing to spend 40 minutes with us um, to talk about uh, better ways to help Aceware do it, uh, shoot me an email or Lori an email. We'd love to have some experienced volunteers to help us guide the next layer of, uh, or the next level of, of enhancement with the whole attendance tracking. So, Lori, thank you much. Everybody, right. have a great summer, and we'll see you in the fall. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.